Everything from a gallon of gas to a loaf of bread costs more, and it's worrisome, even though wages are going up. We still face challenges, and we have to tackle them. We have to tackle them head on. This bill is going to ease inflationary pressures, lowering the cost of working families. 17, oh, excuse me, yes, 17 Nobel laureates in economics wrote a letter to me about 10 days ago saying this is going to affect bring inflation down, not up. That was President Biden yesterday acknowledging inflation is a problem, but he says his spending agenda will come to the rescue. Senator Joe Manchin seems to disagree. He tweeted yesterday in response to the CPI report, quote, by all accounts, the threat posed by record inflation to the American people is not transitory and is instead getting worse. Americans know the inflation tax is real and D.C. can no longer ignore the economic pain Americans feel every day. Manchin has suggested putting the brakes on Biden's spending agenda until inflation slows down. I want to bring in Texas Congressman Michael Burgess. He's also a member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, and he's a medical doctor. Congressman Burgess, your reaction to the president's comments? Well, I don't want to say this president seems out of touch, but I, I do wonder if we're living in the same world sometimes. The uh, um, what, what I'm seeing on the street, what I'm seeing in the grocery stores, what I'm seeing at the fuel pump does not reflect my reality does not been reflected in the president's remarks, and I think that is generally true of the people that I represent. You know, there's a really good opinion article by the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal, and one of the things they say when it comes to Joe Manchin is this has proved him right, uh, that he has been very concerned about the social spending bill, which, remember, was $3.5 trillion. Now it's, you know, $1.8 trillion. And they also say that the biggest mistake that the administration can make right now is to kill the L5 pipeline, the one that goes from Canada through the Midwest, because you've got propane prices up, you've got petroleum liquids up, and then you've got a president that's more focused on climate change and has put us unfortunately in a position where he's going after drillers in the south in Texas in your state and then basically reaching out to OPEC plus and begging them to up supply yeah it's 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 startling in its stupidity uh, look we were energy independence just uh, a, a year ago and the energy independence that this country had really provided us enormous flexibility on the world stage and now it is it's tragic go hat in hand begging OPEC, could you please turn your tap on again? We, we're, we're getting cold over here. That's nuts. We have the resources here in our country, not just to provide for our people at a reasonable cost, but also to be suppliers of people across the world. Yeah, and energy inflation, again, I mean, that is hitting every single wallet. So, of course, you know, I'm sure you want to breathe clean air. I do as well. But but why the administration is so focused on climate change when we've got now a crisis uh, that's affecting everyone uh, day to day is it's a little surprising. I want to bring in my colleague, Joe Pinion. Uh, Joe, jump in here. Congressman, obviously, uh, thank you so much for joining us. You know, uh, as well sure. as most people know, that when you look at what's happening, perhaps in France, uh, France doubling back down on nuclear energy because they recognize, as most scientists recognize, that if your goal is a zero emissions future, nuclear energy being the only uh, source of energy that can power a robust 21st century world, uh, you see with what happens with Germany and Russia, with that pipeline being greenlit by this administration, that they recognize the power of natural gas as a uh, low emissions fuel uh, that provides that energy for a 21st century world. Why in the world? World, does the administration that says they want to reduce the emissions uh, not actually focus on the two keys to that emission reduction that we both have in abundance here in America and can produce robustly here at home? It's a stupidity, a level of stupidity that defies gravity, because if you set the equation of zero carbon emissions at 2050 and over that 30 years recognizing we're going to need 50 to 60 percent more energy in this country, the only way you get from point A to point B is with the development and, and the use of nuclear energy, new, new technology, nuclear energy, as well as continuing to support the nuclear energy generation that we have now to continue to slowly mothball mothball those plants, yeah, it makes no sense at all. And, and, and support our drillers domestically here. And, and that leads me to this, Congressman. This, this resurfaced video shows Biden's nominee to lead a branch of the Treasury saying that she wants to see a certain industry go bankrupt. Listen to this. And here what I'm thinking about is primarily coal industry and oil and gas industry. A lot of the smaller players in that industry are uh, going to probably uh, go bankrupt 
in, in, in short order. At least we want them to go bankrupt if we want to tackle climate change. She wants them to go bankrupt, Congressman. The small, the small players who are the constituents that we represent here in the state of Texas. That's an awful lot of families that, uh, that we're talking about there. And, and, and here's the thing. Uh, natural gas and certainly the technology and the innovation that is present in that industry now is produced in this country in a cleaner fashion than any other country in the world. And in fact, year over year carbon emissions in this country because of the inputs from natural gas, carbon emissions in this country have declined more than the next 10 countries combined since 2005. That's actually a legacy of which we, we should point to and say, this is the way of the future, not shivering in the dark in the cold. Someone should tell her that the sweater that she's wearing in that video has probably been made with petrochemicals. Just a thought. <laughs> and, and, People and don't understand too. these things. All disposables. Yeah. All, all disposables I used when I was in practice, uh, all of that comes from the petrochemical yeah, industry. Petrochemicals. Yeah, yeah, and that's the industry. Michael Burgess, Congressman, it's great to see you, sir. Thank you.